The evidence of benefit is very weak. This comes as a big shock to those who actually read the literature rather than just repeat the mantra uh, fluoridation is safe and effective, fluoridation is safe and effective, fluoridation is safe and effective. I'm now, now giving you the presentation of your typical uh, representative of the American Australian Dental Association. Fluoridation is safe and effective, 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 safe and effective. Okay, but the evidence is very weak. If you, most countries don't fluoridate their water, but their kids' teeth are as good as those that do. Only eight countries in the world have more than 50% of their population drinking fluoridated water. One of them is Australia, and if you look at the rest of the list, you see that most of them are English-speaking, and most of them are heavily influenced by both American and Anglo-English pressure. Fluoridation is really an Anglo-American experiment. Most of Europe does not fluoridate their water. Some started and then stopped. The Netherlands started and stopped. Switzerland started and stopped. A few of those countries had one town fluoridated and stopped. Now there's two things that the, the Victorian Health Department have said about this. First, oh, Dr. John Carney. The first is to say, well, in Europe they don't have the same centralized water systems that we have. They're archaic, they're primitive. Give me a break. Go to Germany, go to the Netherlands, go to Belgium, go to Scandinavia. They're not, their water systems are not primitive. This is something that's come off the top of Carney's head, off the top of the public relations people. They've got to say something, but it's crap. It's bullshit. That's just not true. The reason, yeah, the reason that they don't fluoridate in Europe is twofold. Number one, they're not prepared to force medicine on their people because they think it's a violation of their human rights. That's one reason they've given. And the other reason they've given is that they do not feel that all the health issues ha about fluoridation have been resolved. And you can see explanations from at least a dozen countries on our website because we've approached uh, their spokesman. The other thing that Carney says uh, and other proponents say is, ah, oh, well, in Europe they fluoridate their salts, and that's why they don't have to fluoridate their water. Well, only four countries in Europe fluoridate their salt. Austria, France, Germany, and Switzerland. So the majority of European countries are neither fluoridating their salts or fluoridating their water, and guess what? Their tooth decay is coming down as fast over the period from the 1960s to the present as the fluoridated ones. There's only four fluoridated here and 14 that are not fluoridated. Can you tell the difference? Can you tell which countries are fluoridated and which are not fluoridated? And look over here in the 2000s. Look at the figures for tooth decay. This is, by the way, is tooth decay in 12-year-olds. Look over here. You've got a great big mixture of fluoridated and non-fluoridated countries and you can't tell the difference based upon fluoride as to the tooth decay there. So this whole notion that, um, that there's adding fluoride to the water has a dramatic effect on tooth decay is not supported by the data that's been collected by the World Health Organization for 40 years. Now, in the 1980s, the US government spent a lot of taxpayers' money doing a giant survey of tooth decay in America. They looked at 39,000 children in 84 communities. And the results were published by Brunel and Carlos in 1990. And what they found was they measured uh, decayed, missing, and filled surfaces. This is what they found. For children who'd lived all their lives in a non-fluoridated community, they had 3.4 decayed, missing, and filled permanent surfaces. Now there's five surfaces to a tooth, most tooth, and the four surfaces to the cutting teeth. So this is less than one tooth decay, less than one tooth decay. And the children who lived all their lives in fluoridated communities, 2.8 decayed, missing, and filled surfaces. If we subtract 2.8 from 3.4, we get 0.6 of a tooth surface. That's what all the angst is about. That is why 
They are forcing it upon you, on us in America, to save 0.6 of one two service. We are prepared to violate the citizen's right to informed consent to medication because it could save 0.6 of a tooth surface. We are prepared to risk our children getting brain damage, bone damage, damage to the thyroid gland, accumulation of the pineal gland with God knows what consequences. We may even be killing some young boys with osteosarcoma, all because these mad dentists think it's more important to save 0.6 of a tooth surface than any other tissue in the body. It's king. I would like to see a giant statue. We can save 0.6 of one tooth surface. Instant orgasm for every dentist and every dental assistant in the Western world. Oh, what an achievement. We got to the moon and we're saving 0.6 of a tooth surface. But wait. It gets worse because in Australia, you found even less. In Australia, your Colgate-funded researchers, Spencer and co-workers, found a saving in two states of only 0.12 to 0.3 of a tooth surface. So it's one quarter, one half of the Americans. So we need a smaller statue. No, a bigger statue in Australia, but only 0.12 in solid gold. And Armfield and Spencer, also Colgate-funded researchers at the University of Adelaide, did a study in South Australia. They looked at 10,000 kids in South Australia, and they found no statistical difference in the permanent tooth decay between children who drank fluoridated water all their lives and the children that drank uh, tank water or bottled water. And yet, Mr. Spencer, Dr. Spencer, went on ABC radio and advocated the addition of fluoride to bottled water, having just shown there was no difference. So the benefits in Australia range from zero to 0.3 of one two surface. In, this is a review done for the Ontario Health Agents Ministry from David Locker, the magnitude of fluoridation's effect, he means benefit, is not large in absolute terms, is often not statistically significant, and may not be of clinical significance. And yet we keep violating the individual's right to informed consent to medication, and we continue to take risks with our health and we continue to put hazardous waste from the phosphate fertilizer industry into our clean water. As I say, this is an atrocity. And any MP that hears this information, as I said at the beginning of the program, if they don't act on this, then for God's sake, get rid of them. Because they are not trusted, they can't be trusted to run a bicycle shop, let alone a government. Right. Comerick, uh, he did something that most researchers do not do. He controlled for the delayed eruption of teeth. There's been a number of studies, it's not absolutely clear cut, but there have been a number of studies which indicate that fluoride um, delays the eruption of teeth. And that means that if you had two children, say you had two children eight years of age, the one that lived in the fluoridated community would have less permanent teeth erupted at eight than the kid in the non-fluoridated community. And you've introduced an artifact. They, that one would have the, one of the fluoridated community would have less tooth decay because less teeth are in the mouth. So what you should do is to divide the tooth decay that you are measuring by the number of teeth in the mouth that have erupted. And he did that and there was no difference. No difference in tooth decay between the fluoridated and non-fluoridated communities. And that was a big study. And then this other study, financed by the US government, measured tooth decay as a function of individual exposure to fluoride. Uh, they actually calculated how much fluoride the kids were getting from toothpaste, from water, from whatever. And they found that there was no relationship between tooth decay and the amount of fluoride 
that the kid had swallowed. And by the way, for those who think I'm peddling propaganda here, all this information, all the studies that I've cited, have come from pro-fluoridation researchers and pro-fluoridation governments. It's their own studies. Australia. Uh -huh. Australia. Here we go. This was the situation in 2008. We had nearly, we had three states over 90 percent, a couple of states over 70 percent, Tasmania over 83 percent. Woo! Queensland, less than five percent. And in this mixture, they produced a study, the National Adult Oral Health Survey 2004 to 2006, published by dentists from Colgate-funded Adelaide University. Their claims made headline news. Fluoride generation has half the tooth decay of generation before. Sounds good, doesn't it? Let's go back to those graphs for a minute. Let's go back to the graphs. On every single graph here, you could say that this generation has half the tooth decay of the previous generation. On every single one of those. So how could they claim that this reduction uh, showed that fluoride works? Now either these people are totally incompetent, meaning that they are not aware that these same reductions have happened in all these non-fluoridated countries. So we, to be generous, we could say, you're just not very competent, you Colgate-funded dentist researchers. Or you could be less charitable and say, well, you were aware of the World Health Organization data, in which case this is fraud. You are telling the Australian people that the tooth decay has come down in Australia because you fluoridated your water when it's clear that the same reductions are happening in countries which haven't fluoridated their water. So here are these communities in Queensland have resisted fluoridation for 50 years, but all of a sudden there's a new premier who's not elected, she's appointed, Anna Bly, and in comes fluoridation. <laughs> Built in majority in parliament, and it's forced on every community in Queensland. Based upon these studies, but Marilyn Haynes, Marilyn Haynes um, found, oh, okay, so the, uh, she found on the website of this, these uh, Colgate researchers, she found on the website that they had actually given the tooth decay in four different age groupings for each state, but they didn't do any state-by-state -state comparisons, and she has. She's taken their data and compared them. So here's Queensland in green, less than 5% fluoridated, and there are all the other states in Australia that are 70 to 90%. Now let's look at the tooth decay in each of these age categories. And this actually is illustrated on the, the uh, bill, the, the posters at the back. Children, or adults age 15 to 34. There's Queensland, Queensland, less than West Australia. It's, it's very much of a muchness. Uh, only ACT seems to be doing pretty good on this, but Queensland less than Western Australia. So Queensland is not the worst, right, in that category. Let's go to the next category. Um, 35 to 54 year olds. Again, very much a muchness, but this time Queensland is less than Victoria. Let's go to the next category. This is uh, 55 years and older. Again, it's very much of a muchness. Uh, Queensland, in this case, is less than Tasmania. And if we add all of them together, uh, Queensland, again, very much of a muchness, but Queensland, again, is less than Tasmania. So in every age group, and the age groups combined, Queensland does not have the worst tooth decay in Australia. So the imposition of fluoridation on Queensland on the basis of their teeth were worse than the other states in Australia was a complete, 
utter fraud. And Anna Bly is a fraud, and her Ministry of Health is a fraud, and they should be put, brought to court. I mean, it's very serious. It's very, very, very serious in my view when a state government sets out to trick the people on a public health issue. And that's what they did. They misled the people of Queensland on this thing. Yes, and that's somebody from Queensland. She doesn't like it.